Spray foam is one of the most talked about insulation products. Mesmerizing videos of expanding spray foam are widely shared on social media. DIYers recommend it for tiny homes, van conversions and shipping container homes. New homes in the suburbs are also moving from traditional insulation to spray foam. In this video, we're going to discuss how open and closed cell spray foam insulation is made, their performance and properties. We're going to find out if one is better than the other and where you should use them. Both open and closed cell polyurethane spray foam is made of two parts. Part A contains very reactive, low molecular weight chemicals called isocyanates, which have a nitrogen, carbon, oxygen group. These can be methylene diphenyl diisocyanate and polymeric methylene diphenyl diisocyanate. Part A is standard for all manufacturers. Part B is a proprietary blend of chemicals that provides unique properties in the foam. It contains a polyol, which is an organic compound containing hydroxyl or OH- groups. It also contains initiating catalysts, which help the reaction to occur, curing catalysts that allow the reaction to continue to its completion, flame retardants that prevent the start or slow the growth of fire, blowing agents that form the gaseous part of the foam, and surfactants that reduce the surface tension of a liquid and encourage foaming. When the two parts come into contact with each other, an exothermic reaction begins, heat is generated and polyurethane bubbles are formed. This is a simplified equation of the chemical reaction. In open cell spray foam, the bubbles rupture, leaving behind only the struts or the points at which the two bubbles touch each other. In closed cell insulation, the bubbles don't rupture, creating interconnected, closed pockets with trapped blowing agents. Open cell spray foam uses water as a blowing agent, while closed cell spray foam needs a chemical blowing agent. The environmental impact of closed cell foam used to be a concern in the past, but thanks to strict EPA regulations, companies now use blowing agents with an incredibly low global warming potential of just one. I recently visited Ambit, a spray foam company in Dallas, to see how both open cell and closed cell polyurethane spray foam are manufactured. I met with their chemists and toured their research lab and manufacturing facility. It was a very educational trip. They also gave me these samples to experiment with and review. Let's now discuss some of the properties of open and closed cell spray foam. Open cell spray foam expands over a hundred times its liquid volume so it can insulate hard-to-reach nooks and crannies. It is oversprayed and then shaved down. It is soft and flexible. It has a low compressive strength and can be easily punctured and pierced. Closed cell spray foam expands about 30 to 40 times its liquid volume, so it's good in tight spots where space is an issue. It is undersprayed because it cannot be shaved down easily. It is hard and doesn't compress. Open cell has a density of 0.4 to 1.2 pounds per cubic foot, while closed cell spray foam has a density of 1.75 to 2 pounds per cubic foot. Lower density means a higher yield. You can get more coverage of open cell foam than closed cell foam for the same volume of raw ingredients. Both of these products are very good insulators. They have a high R value, which is a measure of resistance to the flow of heat. The higher the number, the greater the insulating power. Because it doesn't contain any trapped air, open cell spray foam has a lower R value of 3.5 per inch. Closed cell foam has a higher R value of 6 per inch. Remember that the R value test ignores the very important air sealing properties of spray foam. We discussed this in a previous video, I'll link it up here. If applied correctly, both open and closed cell spray foam will act as air barriers and prevent up to 98% of air loss. In reality, these perform far better than traditional R3.5 or R6 insulation. The three main modes of heat transfer are conduction, convection and radiation. The predominant heat transfer mechanism of open cell spray foam is conduction. Closed cell spray foam blocks heat transfer by conduction because the trapped gas is a poor conductor. 
Unlike traditional fiberglass insulation, both of these prevent heat transfer by convection currents or air movement. 3.75 inches of properly applied open cell spray foam creates an air barrier compared to 1 inch of closed cell foam. Finally, radiation, which is the transfer of heat through electromagnetic waves. When installed under a radiant surface such as a hot roof, the interior surface temperature is significantly lowered, which also lowers the radiant heat load. Open cell foam has a perm rating of around 15 for a 2 inch depth, so it cannot block water vapor. It needs an additional vapor barrier, like a sheet of plastic, to prevent condensation inside the wall. Closed cell foam acts like a vapor barrier when thick enough, over 1.5 inches. It has a perm rating of less than 1 perm for a 2 inch depth. To test the water resistance of open cell foam, I poured some water mixed with the green dye over it. The liquid immediately seeped through the gaps and the open pores. Open cell foam is moisture permeable, meaning water can move through it. But its performance really depends on the brand. Some foam retains only 5% of its weight in water, while cheaper brands retain as much as 75%. Closed cell spray foam, on the other hand, is 100% moisture impermeable, meaning it does not allow water to move through it. Liquid seeped through some of the cracks, but most of it just puddled on the top. While closed cell foam might sound like the better option in all cases, Open cell foam might be better on a roof deck. If a leak were to occur, the foam would be discolored and it could be quickly repaired. Closed cell foam, on the other hand, would conceal the leak and water could build up somewhere else, which can cause bigger problems. Before we move on to their surprisingly poor fire resistance, I'd like to talk about the sponsor of this portion of the video, Insulation for US. They are the largest US online retailer for insulation products. They ship nationwide with over 800 locations in their huge distribution network. Insulation for US is cheaper than big box retailers and they offer a $60 flat shipping fee on 80% of all products. Brands such as Owens Corning, Rockwell, Hunter Panels, R Max, Kingspan, Handy Foam Spray Foam, Bubble Wrap and more are available online to purchase today and to be delivered directly to your job site. Use promo code BELINDA5 to receive an additional 5% discount off your next order with insulationforus.com. When open cell foam came in contact with the flame, it immediately caught on fire and started to smoke. However, the flame did not spread. It was extinguished the moment I pulled the fire away from the foam. Closed cell foam also had surprisingly poor fire resistance. Both of these are thermoset materials. They will char and flake when burned, but they will not melt and drip like a coffee cup. They meet class 1 fire standards. They have a flame spread index of less than 25 and a smoke developed index of less than 450. As you can tell, their performance was very disappointing compared to rock wool or other mineral wool insulation. It's also plastic, so the smoke can be toxic. The cost of both open and closed cell foam has fluctuated wildly over the past year because of raw material shortages and supply chain issues. A rough estimate is 50 cents to $1 per board foot of open cell spray foam and $1.50 to $3 for closed cell foam. Finally, let's discuss some uses of open and closed cell spray foam. Open cell is good for soundproofing. It has about twice the sound resistance in normal frequency ranges as closed cell foam. It is also future proof. If you need to renovate a house or run new wiring, this is going to be easier to work with. Closed cell foam's rigid structure and durability make it ideal for exposed walls because it won't be damaged if it is bumped by machinery or tools. The National Association of Home Builders has shown that walls installed with closed cell spray foam have a racking strength of up to 300% greater than walls without it. High density closed cell spray foam insulation can reinforce exterior walls when sprayed in stud cavities. 
Open cell is better in warm climates when the inside of the structure needs to be kept cool. In the states, that includes climate zones 1 to 4. Since it is vapor open, it allows homes to dry out, preventing condensation and mold. Closed cell foam, which has a higher R value, is better in cold climates when the inside of the structure needs to be kept warm. In the states, that includes climate zones 5 to 8 and marine 4. Open cell foam should not be used below grade like in basements because it is susceptible to water damage. Flash and Bat is a hybrid system where closed cell spray foam and fiberglass are both used to insulate a space. It is more effective than just fiberglass and less expensive than all closed cell spray foam. It is not recommended to use open cell foam for this application. I wouldn't say that one is better than the other. Your project, budget, location, and other variables will determine which spray foam is best for you. They offer many benefits to traditional insulation, but they also have many drawbacks like risks to the environment and our health. I'll discuss all of them in my next video. So hit that subscribe button, notification bell, and the like button too. I'll link my Patreon page in the description if you can support me, I'd really appreciate it. A big thank you to everyone already supporting me. Thanks for watching, see ya.